Hey everybody, welcome back to the Infuse Your Future podcast, the place where we bring together people and ideas who are making the world a better place. I'm your host, Dr. C. I'm excited for today's episode because you guys are going to be meeting Master Transformational Coach Troy Vincent. And he's going to talk about something called MER, Mental Emotional Release. I'm super excited to talk to him about this. This might just be the future of mental health. It has helped thousands of people get completely over things like depression, panic attacks, phobias in a very short period of time. We're talking in some cases instantaneously or a couple of days. In fact, during the episode, Troy is going to explain how he suffered from panic attacks for years and ultimately failed therapy, failed medication, and then stumbled across the MER therapy. The MER therapy was so successful for him that he has been panic attack free since doing it two years ago, and it inspired him to become a master practitioner himself. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hi. How's it going, Carla? Thank you for having me. It's going great. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm happy to be a part of the community, how you just said, you know, hey, people who are here to, you know, make the world a better place. I'm like, that's so cool. I guess I am amongst them, those group of people. You totally (laughs) are. (laughs) <laughs> totally are. <laughs> well, I mean, I know a little bit about you, but probably most people listening do not. So can you give us a little introduction, who you are, what you do? and Yeah. So for myself, I'm a deep transformational coach. It's what I spend people, help people do with uh, getting into creating and connecting with their authentic self. Um, this wasn't always my path. Uh, this is a, a newer path for myself although I've been doing elements of it for years. So before this, I was actually a radio broadcaster for 23 years. And and then, um, you know, life happens and personal growth happens and suddenly, you know, shifts can happen. And we can dive into that of what actually got me into choosing this kind of uh, path here, why this became my passion and my purpose completely, 100%. Uh, so for myself, I was experiencing for the first time anxiety at a level that I never experienced before. And I started having panic attacks. And at first they were at home. It was on the privacy of your own home. <laughs> and no one's around. Everything's fine. Okay, okay. I thought it was a heart attack at first for like 45 minutes. I was like, oh my goodness. And then uh, this started happening, you know, at work. You know, so even like in the stu- radio studio with my co-host there, but it was kind of private. It was off air. So that was good. I was like, okay, she knew about it. And that was it. And then you know, it started happening where I'd go to the grocery store and I'm having a panic attack in the parking lot, you know, uh, at Walmart. And then I'm having, you know, a panic attack in an actual grocery store. And then suddenly now it's just getting more public, more public. And then at that point, I'm like, I got to do something about this. I need to get control of my brain. And so that's when I, you know, uh, finally went and reached out and, you know, went past the old stigma of mental illness and went, okay, I need to do this. And so I went and I connected with a therapist. And it was very helpful to do that, to speak it, you know, to get that out of your system to go, oh, this is what I'm dealing with. And there's a lot of freedom in that. And then along that journey, what I found is therapy actually kind of kept me trapped in the stories that I was telling, you know, my reality that I'd created, right? And so I was just retelling these stories or these new versions of the stories week by week by week. And so what actually happened for me is like, it got worse. And so my panic and anxiety level went up and eventually... My therapist like, we should get you on medication. And I, that was just defeat for me. I was like, oh, no, no meds. But of course, I'm like, I want to get past this, so I'll do it. And I did. And I was led to believe, like, this is, this is it. This is your life sentence, essentially, right? It's like, you have anxiety, and it's yours forever. You get to keep it. Hooray! And you now have to manage it for the rest of your, day, your days, right? All the decades you got left, this is yours to keep, and you have to manage it. And I'm very grateful that while I took on the role of managing it, I went, I don't accept that. (laughs) There's no way that this is my forever. And so I started, you know, delving into ways to, to get past that and overcome it. I'm like, there's gotta be a solution. And, you know, eventually I came across a friend. She'd been struggling with depression in a big way. And I would check in with her every week or two, you know, just to support her. And she'd do the same for me, for my anxiety. And so it was a good relationship that way. And But I noticed a shift in her, like a huge shift. 
And I'm like, oh, cool. She's having like a real spike of goodness. Like, you know, like an ups and downs of depression, right? Uh, I'm like, wow, she's, she's, she's doing really good. She seems really grounded this week. Week goes by, same thing. Another week goes by, same thing. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I had to, I didn't mention it before. I just, so I called her out on it. I'm like, there's something different about you. What did you do? What did you do? Because maybe it can help me too. <laughs> and and she said, I have a life coach. And I went, what's that? I've never heard of it before. I'm like, what's a life coach? And she's like, oh, here, this is what I did. He helped me with my depression. And he does a thing called mental and emotional release. And I'm like, well, what's that? She's like, I can't explain it. Here, there's a book. <laughs> so she gave me a book, right? And I read this thing. And after I read it, I went, what? This is possible? And in it, it was showing me, you know, what I was hoping for, you know, that belief that I had. I'm like, this can't be my life sentence. There's no way that I'm stuck with anxiety or depression forever. And this was like a path of going, hey, this can, can happen for you. And of course, you're always going to have that skepticism, right? It's like, it's a healthy bit of skepticism. You're like, okay, this feels too good to be true. Let me just check into this. So I met with her life coach and yeah. He just shared all of his experiences and with his clients. And I was like, all right, let's do this. And so I did. And Carla, it was the most freeing and transformational thing that I've ever experienced. And the beautiful part is, is that it can happen so fast, which we can talk about, right? And 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 you'll always hear people, hey, be careful when people say things can happen fast. They're mean, that's lying and stuff like that, especially in personal growth. It's a, it takes forever. It's a whole, it's always a process. And there's elements of that are they're very, very true. And it's also true that you can overcome a lot of your barriers fast because these are all limiting decisions. Decisions are you know, beliefs, right? Beliefs are just decisions. And so at some point you decided to have that belief. And you can undecide. You can decide to have a new one. And there's a lot of reasons why we don't. <laughs> the baggage, the negative emotions that are attached to it, the trauma, the experiences. But there's a way to, you know, get past that. And there's slower ways to do it by going through, you know, conscious memories. And then there's a faster way to do it, which is what MER, mental and emotional release does. And it's just using neuroscience, right? Because a memory is just a group of neurons. And there's emotion attached to it. There's beliefs attached to it. And so there's a process you can do, just detach them. And so you still have the memory. Of course, the event happened. But now if you think back to something where it's like, I have a negative charge, I feel fear when I think back to that day when I was a kid, or I feel resentment towards this. I feel anger about that. I feel scared and confused about this. Those negative emotions that are attached to it can be removed. So now you can just be set free and just as you think back to that memory, it's just neutral now. It's just neutral. And so that's what I experienced. And so I showed up for my panic attacks. And as soon as I did MER, it was gone. My anxiety was gone. I haven't had panic attacks in the two years since I did MER, right? Wow. And I had someone actually reach out today. It's like, I'm experiencing anxiousness. So when you say it's gone, do you mean it like it? What do you mean by that? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I just don't get anxious, you know, in a story that I share where there's like, so I was in an airport in a foreign country. I was traveling alone. And when I got to the airport, I didn't have a plane ticket yet. I was going to buy one there and fly out on the next available flight for myself to go to the next foreign city. And when I did that, when I was discovering I was in line, I discovered I lost my credit card and I didn't have enough money with me. And so here I was, I felt, you know, all of a sudden just stranded, like I'm all alone and I'm seemingly stranded. And I'm like, what do I do? I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> I don't know wow. what the solution is. Right. And so in that moment, I just stepped out of the line because I think I was like two or three people away from going to the counter. I'm like, well, I got to take myself out of the line here. <laughs> so let's figure this out. <laughs> and, you know, as I think back before I did the release, you know, think about the anxiety I could have felt. Think about how we all know your brain just swirls, right? With with thoughts and emotions and it goes into a cycle and that triggers your behaviors. And so I would have had a massive panic attack in that situation. But instead, I just went, okay, well, let's go have a sit down and give this some thought here. And that's what I did. I went and sat next to someone. I said, hey, how's it going? And they're like, good. I you? love I'm good. that. 
That's it. I just went, I'm good. I didn't go sit there and go, oh my goodness, I lost my credit card. And that's just, I'm like, I'm not in the mood right now. I don't know if telling my story is what I need to do. I'm like, I'm just going to sit here for a moment. Let's just, let's just hang out. And, and as I did that, a thought came to mind and went, I don't know how I'm getting out of this, but I know I'm going to. You know, like this isn't how my story ends. And he died alone, stranded in an airport. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> so it was just like, I know I'm getting out of this. I just don't know how. And I actually started to smile and I got excited. I'm like, this has turned into a cool adventure. <laughs> not one that you wish upon yourself, but here I am. And within, I'll say 10 minutes, it's probably less. I, you know, just had a clear mind and I was calm and I'm like, oh, I could do this. And, and within a half hour, I had it all solved. Right. And, and everything was fine. And it was just, it was so nice to be in that kind of space where I was just free of any kind of anxiety, any anxiousness. And I was just like, all right, here I am. We're going to figure this out. This is going to be cool. And so that's just a level of, you know, transformation that you can have just by releasing all that baggage, right? All those fears, all those negative emotions and limiting beliefs and trauma, past trauma. And so I overcame my panic attacks. I overcame, that was what I went into, you know, wanted to do it for. And I did it, hooray. <laughs> but along with that, I also carried a strong fear of flying actually. And, and I had a bad flying uh, experience, you know, where, you know, it's one of those ones where even like the flight attendants look like, oh my God, I chose the wrong pr profession. Those kind of moments. So, <laughs> and I remember I got off that plane and had to get on another one in six days. And I was like, how am I going to do that? And so my doctor gave me Ativan. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm like more medication. Great. <laughs> and so that's how I had to fly with Ativan. And then after I did MER, uh, I remember the next flight that I hopped on, I was sitting there beforehand and I usually pop the Ativan as I'm aboarding. And something my intuition just told me, like, you don't need it. I went, really? That's curious. All right, I'll follow that. And so sure enough, I hopped in that plane. It was the greatest flight I ever had. I had so much fun, Carla. I landed and I was like, I can't wait to fly back. <laughs> like, I'm so excited <laughs> for the flight home. Right? So, yeah, even that time I was stranded in the airport, by then my, you know, my fear of flying is just gone. And it's just, it's gone. It doesn't take months or years of talking your way through it to overcome it. It was released. It was released without even talking about it with my coach. My coach didn't even know wow. I had a fear of flying. And I released, you know, what was growing into a phobia. <laughs> and and then what I also discovered was that I released uh, a lot of negative emotions, including anger. You know, it showed up in the form of anger and confusion. And underneath of that was a lot of uh, terror and shame that I carried from abuse that I had as a, as you know, in my childhood. So, you know, physical abuse, mental, emotional, even spiritual. And so for the longest time, how I would manage that is avoid those conversations, avoid anything, you know, on social media that might trigger stuff. Right. Otherwise I would feel this tightness in my chest. Like it would just, Oh, it felt like someone was just sitting on you. Right. And, and my body temperature would just heat up and rise. And I could feel like myself just seething, like the anger starting to show up there, you know, a real resentment. And then, and that's what I would experience every time. And I'd have to, you know, kind of manage that, get myself through it. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be faster than others. And now, you know, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, someone just brought up, oh, you know, abuse. And, and I just thought my brain was just like, yeah, I can relate to that but there's no emotional attachment to it. And the conversation was happening and I was just kind of like, like a fly on the wall. Like I just felt like I was having an out of body experience. <laughs> and I was just like, I feel nothing. Like I feel so wow. neutral to this. I don't feel the tightness in my chest. My body temperature isn't rising. I'm not seething. In fact, as I reflect back on it later, I'm like, I actually have a lot of pity and empathy for you know, the abuser in the sense of like, they thought they were doing right and they weren't. It was a really horrible, you know, behavior and not constructive, but, you know, I just had some compassion all of a sudden. I'm like, geez, I did not have that before. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, and that's when it, you know, really dawned on me. And I, you know, I started attaching the words heal for real, like, cause 
like this is something again my coach had no idea i was dealing with this right that i'd done had experienced any of that and it was just gone i'm like oh my goodness like i'm actually healed from this like this isn't something that's i'm not in you know i'm numb to it today and it's it'll, i can get triggered again you know next week or later it's like no i can talk about it now and i'm just like isn't this cool and like it's so neutral <laughs> and like it's it's just dealt with it's gone i released it and so releasing the trauma releasing the negative emotions releasing any meanings that you make from that all the beliefs that we create and it's just so powerful and impactful and so that's why when i say it can be fast it can be fast and huge change huge change it's not the cure all of you know hey we're going to wave this magic wand and now you're a complete project, you know, but the first <laughs> requisite of change is dealing with that baggage, getting rid of that, you know, getting past your past and, you know, heal. And then once you get into that, you get to shift into the other phases of, of change. And my goodness, like you just get so much clarity, so much alignment, you know, you connect to your authentic self. You're like, Oh, I can actually hear my intuition. This is easy. <laughs> you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> this is nice. I love that. I love that. Is is that what made you decide to become a coach yourself? I mean, what what was it yeah. that made you decide to do it yourself? Yeah, yeah. So after I experienced that for myself, it was about a week later, and I was meeting with my coach again. He was like, "Okay, you know, we're we're now going to you know really tap into your alignment, right? We're going to just get you aligned with your values. Values are your deepest level of programming that we have, and so there's a, a attached to those values are beliefs, good beliefs, bad beliefs. <laughs> and so when you clear out the baggage, now those values are cleaned up and you can do more with them. You can really use them as your radar um, and give yourself great direction, right? You have alignment and um, this becomes your, becomes your compass. And it's amazing how you can use these values as a huge, cool tool. And so started doing that. And he's like, we're going to set a goal, you know, we're going to get you aligned. We're going to set a goal. What do you want to do? And I I was sitting in his office and out of nowhere, I was like, I want to change my career. <laughs> I, was, I kind of looked over my shoulder like, did I say that? <laughs> Radio is the only thing I knew <laughs> for like the 23 years. I literally thought before that, I thought I was trapped in radio. It's like, I painted myself into a corner. I'm not going to be able to get out of this. This is my life. This is what I'm doing. And radio is dying. So I was like, uh oh, that's not good. But I felt trapped, right? And then now that the baggage was gone, I was like, I'm not trapped at all. You know, I'm going to get out of radio. And I was like, geez. And he was like, cool, when do you want to do it? And I was like, within a year. And then again, I was, Carl, I was looking over my shoulder going, well, what, where did that come from? <laughs> Who's talking? Who's How talking through my body? <laughs> I don't even know what career I want. <laughs> and then he said, so do you have any ideas of what you might want to do? And then it just, boom, it was just, my unconscious mind was just like, it's this. I, I can't believe how free I feel. Like, it's phenomenal. This is what I've been searching for. This is, I was enduring so much through therapy that kept me trapped in my stories. This is the only thing that's ever helped me free me of my stories. And I don't have to manage things. It's so exhausting when you just got to manage things all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, I just, I got so much free time just to, you know, go and, and energy. It's like, whoo. And so I said, this is what I want to do. I want to you know, not enough people know about this and I want to bring this to the world. Like, this is crazy. And I just want to serve people in this way who want to be served this way. And he just said, you'll be great at it. Do it. <laughs> and so, all right, how do I do it? <laughs> he gave me the path. And so, yeah, here I am now, uh, um, you know, a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, which is the techniques based in and mental and emotional release and hypnosis and it's been just absolutely incredible to serve people in this way. You know, I, I thought it was kind of crazy in the moment when I said, I want to be out of radio in a year. Uh, I was actually out in three months. I, uh, wow. I just felt so aligned with what I wanted and what radio didn't feel aligned with me anymore. And when you have that sort of clarity and connection to yourself, what's not aligned with you, you really don't have a lot of time for <laughs> You're just like, Nope, Sorry. <laughs> And now you have that conviction, right? you know, you, you got that ability, that gumption to like, just stand up for what you want. You're like, no, that's not working for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do this instead. So yeah, um, I was, I was told one day by my big radio producers, like, yeah, you're, uh, you're pretty, you're, you're kind of too positive. We need you to, you know, 
complain about stuff on the radio more. We want you to wow. just gripe. And not about big things. We don't want to talk, you know, complain about big stuff. We just want you to gripe about the little minutia of life because people can relate to that. And you know how they can. It's true. But it's like, well, that just keeps you in a lower energy, you know? I don't want to relate to people that way anymore. I want to relate to people going, hey, I used to be anxious. I used to deal with depression. I used to, you know, hide myself. I used to, you know, have imposter syndrome. I used to be a people pleaser. I used to have perfectionism. I used to have all of these things. And I can relate to that. If that's you, I can relate to that. And I want you to know that's not a life sentence. You can get past that. That's how I want to connect with people. And I want to serve them deeply and go, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that gunk that you don't need anymore. Are you interested? You know, like, like, let's do it that way. And yeah, so they told me like, yeah, you're too positive on the radio. And it was so funny because when they hired me, they were like, oh, we, we're not sure that you're going to be positive enough on the radio. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to gripe about stuff. And they're like, okay, we don't want to gripe all the time. <laughs> and so now they're like, you're too positive. And I smiled. And I went, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. This is not congruent <laughs> with me anymore. Here's my two weeks. And they were just like, what? No, no, wait, what? And I'm like, no. And they're like, sleep on it. Come back tomorrow. And I went, I can, but it's going to be the same answer. <laughs> Yeah, and I haven't looked back. That is such a great story. I love it. What I want to do, and I've been full time ever since, and so it's coming up. It'll be two years in Christmas that I've been been doing it. Wow, that's a that's a great story. I just love it. So, um, I know you've talked a lot about the process and and your own journey with it. Is there anything more specific you want to say about the actual process of MER and? And by the way, I'm just glad you went through this process because I had never heard of it. You know, I, I've i been in the coaching world for a couple of years. I even went through a trauma recovery course, you know, trying to figure out my own stuff. This is the first I've heard. I, I kind of heard about neuro, neuro-linguistic programming sort of on the side, but never really dove into it. And I didn't have any idea what you were going to talk about when I first reached out to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I find out about this MER and I'm like, and, and you're telling me it's been around for 30 years. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you know, how come more people don't know about this? And I'm, I'm excited to learn about it and try it and, yeah. you know, get rid of a bunch of my own baggage so I can have a lot more free time <laughs> mentally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so powerful and it can happen fast because, you know, we created the baggage instantly. So so Dr. Matt James, who, you know, is the creator of, of Mental Emotion Release, who's the author of the book, I got trained through him. And uh, he was talking about how he was in, you know, going for his doctorate and he was in psychology, a psychology class. And he just asked his professor, he's like, why, why is it that we, that, you know, trauma can be created in an instant, but we can't get past it? Why, why does it take so long to get past it? And his professor said something interesting. He was like, well, that's not necessarily true. He said, it's just the way that psychology is set up right now. It's like we take an interest in what people are experiencing. And we want to understand how it happened, how they came, how it affects behaviors. And so you're kind of studying them. <laughs> so you don't want them to move on yet. <laughs> it's like, we want, we got stuff to learn. <laughs> And so they kind of have that approach and, and they take it through. And so it's a slower process. And he's like, okay. And the professor's like, hey, you know, keep keep pursuing what you pursue. Because at this point, Dr. Matt had, it was well-versed and he's been doing NLP, you know, with, you know, since he was like 13 years old. His dad, Matt James, actually created, I'm not sure if you heard of this, timeline therapy. So timeline therapy. And his dad created that. And so Dr. Matt uses part of that along with the rest of MER. And, and yeah, so just using, getting into that and realized, okay, this is what neuroscience teaches us to what I just talked about. Like memory is just a group of neurons and then these things are attached to it. And there's a process where you can just release it and it happens and you have an instant brain change like right away. Right. <laughs> like, be, And the reason why that happens is because all behavior is driven by your values. So like I said, our deepest level of programming is our values. So anything you're doing is to nourish a value. And the strategy you're running is based off usually like a, a, a belief attached to the value. So let's say I have the belief it's not safe to be alone. 
right? And so I have a fear of judgment, rejection. I don't want to be alone, or, you know, whether it's in a you know loving relationship or whether it's a group of people at my job, whatever it might be. And so, so you have this value of like say love and safety. Attached to that is that belief it's not safe to be alone. So therefore, I need to be with someone <laughs> to be safe and experience love. And then you take it to the next level of like, okay, well, those thoughts can spark fears. We need a strategy. I know what I'll do. I'll just, you know, keep quiet. I'll not speak up. I will put other people's needs ahead of my own. I will do all these strategies to make sure I'm not alone, right? I'll help them feel good. I'll make sure that their feelings are more important than mine. I will, <laughs> you know, do all of these things. And so what happens is your strategy is self-abandonment and you're completely disconnecting from yourself. But the behavior is to serve those values. That self-abandonment, yeah, that's unhealthy, but you're also in the moment making sure you're safe, <laughs> making sure you're connected to love. And so that's a win in the mind of your unconscious based on the beliefs that you have. So if you want to change the behavior, the mistake we often do is go, there's a saying, I know you've heard this because uh, we went through a similar coach, the same coaching program. It's like, in order to have something different, you got to do something different. And that's a mistake that we make. So often we'll look for external solutions going, okay, I'll go try this. I'll go do this. I'm going to go and meet with that person. I'm going to go and try that program. I'm going to go and do this and do this, do this, do this. And often we'll do that and we don't get the results, even especially when it comes say, to weight loss, right? I want to, I'm going to go and get in the best shape. Of my life. I'm going to go lose 30 pounds. And then you go and I'm going to go and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that routine. I'm going to do that diet. I'm going to do that. And then you sabotage yourself along the way. And you go, why, why am I doing that? It's because it's not aligned with your your beliefs. So there's a there's a belief or multiple beliefs in the way. And so in order to do something truly different, you gotta be someone different. And who you're being is based on what you're believing. Right. And so that's where again it begins with your beliefs. So let's say you get rid of that belief, you just release that belief of it's not safe to be alone. And now you have a belief, I'm fine. I'm safe alone. It's no problem. Well, now a belief, you know, invites certain thoughts to come into your head. Those thoughts create emotions. Emotions create the responses, the behavior. So tracing it all back to the belief. Now, if the thought comes into my mind of, well, it's not going to come up in my mind. It's not safe to be alone, right? So that... And it's like, oh, we need to, you know, stay silent. I need to shut up or else I could get myself fired or, you know, or this person's going to leave me or those thoughts don't come into your mind. You don't entertain them. If they do, they don't like, you don't even attach to them. They just come and go and you probably don't even notice them because they're not creating any emotion. There's nothing, there's no charge there anymore. And so you allow your, your headspace for healthier thoughts, which creates you know different emotional experience which creates different behavior and so that's why it, hap it can happen really really fast i had a, a client he came to me and he's just like i'm a people pleaser <laughs> through and through i'm a people pleaser i just i step back and i surrender everything i over apologize i just you know when someone gives me any kind of like Static, I just, I just crumple right away and I do it in my relationship, you know, with my spouse. I do it in my job with my clients, my boss. It's like, I just, that's what I do. It's a strategy I'm running. And I'm like, okay, let's get rid of it. So he did MER and just instantly, he was just like, yeah, I'm, that doesn't feel congruent with me anymore. And I checked in with him a week later, you know, I'm like, so what did you notice? And he, first he didn't even notice it, which I love. There's a reason for it. But he's like, yeah, nothing was really different. Um, well, you know, there's one time I was out at a, a party, a birthday party, and I was getting kind of tired. And, you know, the party was not over. Like they're going to stick around for a couple hours. Now that I think about it, like I would have easily just stayed there because I didn't want to disappoint the birthday guy. And I would have, you know, didn't want to look bad or have him take offense to anything. I would have just totally sacrificed my own wealth or my own health to just stay there and tough it out. Instead, I just went, Hey guys, I'm tired. I'm going to run. They all went, okay. <laughs> and I left. 
And now that I think about it, it's like, wow, you know, I didn't even notice it. Like I didn't even notice when I was doing it, like that it was, you know, rare for me to do that and new. And I'm like, well, why was that? Why do you think that was? She's like, because it just, it's aligned with me. It's just who I am. It's just me. That's me now. That's why I didn't notice it. It's just automatic. Yeah, that's it. And then he had other examples. He's like, yeah, um, you know, wife said, hey, when do you get home? We will uh, go and, you know, take the dog for a walk. And he just thought, okay, yeah, I'm actually, no, I, I think I'm in the mood for something else. Well, hey, you know, uh, you go ahead. You go walk the dog. You don't have to wait for me. You go ahead. He's like, I never would have done that. I would have been so scared to, <laughs> to say that to my wife and have her think, oh no, she's going to think I'm don't care about her or, you know, <laughs> whatever it may be, a whole swirl of old ideas that would come and trigger emotions and cause him to just go, I got to do this. I got to be a good soldier. I got to follow through. I got to, you know, give up my wants and needs. He's like, yeah. And, you know, you know, it's a year later now. And he's just like, this is just who I am. I don't people please. Like it was just gone. <laughs> it was just so nice. And it's so powerful knowing that you can do that. The, the key is if you want to talk about like, say the process, why and why it works. I had someone reach out and say, is it like EMDR? Is that what it's called? EMDR. Yeah. And so based on what I was told about EMDR, it's where you kind of go back to the event, say a traumatic event, and you go back and you kind of live in it. And somehow it's going to like desensitize you to it. I don't know the exact process. And so she asked me about that. And I says, I like that. And so um, I looked it up to go, okay, let me refresh my memory on it. And went, okay. Yeah. No, it's not like that. And, and here's what it, the difference is. You don't have to relive your trauma. You don't have to go back to the event because the truth is the first event that really it's like a chain of events that led to maybe what, what we seem, what we think is like the tra traumatic event might not even be the first event. It might be something, the layers that built up to it. And we don't know it consciously. Um, you know, we carry so much you know, emotions and stuff. We don't want to just clean up stuff from one event because you have a, a billion events. Do you want to go and do them one by one by one by one? It'll take forever. <laughs> oh, <No. laughs> right. It's like, yeah, I can, I can help you. Like an elevator girl, you know, who had a phobia of elevators and you can do a trauma release with MER on that. And, you know, she gave up a 25 year phobia of elevators in 10 minutes like it was just gone rode an elevator yeah with i remember her. you talking to me about yeah. that story the last time we talked yeah, would you care yeah, to share yeah. that one it, yeah that was so crazy girl she was like six years old and she was playing on the elevators with a couple of younger cousins no adults and they jammed the elevator and got stuck and and they were trapped for hours and then when they got out you know she's six years old and she's like okay elevators are evil <laughs> i'm never gonna want to go into another <laughs> one of those and she held true to that like she made a decision again beliefs are just decisions right and so she made a decision she believed those are evil that's what well, i'm deciding right now i don't belong on those that's what i'm deciding right now and it just creates these unconscious commitments you know not just conscious commitments but unconscious commitments to follow through and and she held on to it even in her 20s when she lived on the 23rd floor of a building 23 <laughs> floors and she took the stairs she took the stairs with the groceries <laughs> You know, like that's a great fitness program. I got to say that <laughs> so, is some good that came out of it. <laughs> There's always a silver lining to anything. And, and then after she did, so I met her in her thirties and then she released it and yeah, it was just a, you know, a 10 minute conversation. Right. And the release itself is actually instant. I mean, just like a little 10 minutes to lead up to it, the process. And after that, and she's like, so how do you feel about elevators? She's like, I'm actually kind of excited to get on one. It's like, <laughs> you're at a hotel. And they're like, well, do you want to go do it now? <laughs> it's like, sure. Yeah. So we were there for a conference. We left the conference room and there was like, I don't know, 60 of us marching down the hall <laughs> towards the elevator. And I just remember thinking, I got to get on this elevator. I need to see what happens because I am really good with like sensory acuity of just tuning into like people's body language and seeing like are they trying to hide something and i know it because i used to try to hide stuff so that's why i became attuned to it and and so i'm like i'll know if she's hiding fear i'll know right like maybe she's maybe she has maybe she has courage now instead of you know this being phobia maybe she just gained courage which means they're going to tackle your fear oh, and then go and 
you know, as you see that threshold, you know, you go to an elevator and you got that little threshold of the floor and then the actual elevator floor. And there's that little gap where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, it fall down there forever. <laughs> and, and so we walk into the elevator and I'm just standing beside her. She's leaned up against the elevator wall, Carla, like she'd been riding an elevator, you know, 30 years. <laughs> just like, like it was just, this is just what I do. That's another example. It's like, this doesn't even feel like crazy cool in the sense of like, I'm like, I'm, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. She was just like, it. this just feels like me. <laughs> like, this is who I am. I'm an elevator rider. <laughs> and so, that is, that is and crazy. I was like, she was so calm. Like, she was just so cool, like the Fonz. And, and I just going, yeah, that's so, so awesome. So that, that was even just targeting a single event. And that's great. But what happens is you can go deeper, you go deeper, get to the greater problem. There's a problem, like a core problem that allows all the other ones to exist. You know, I got a tree in behind me here. Um, If you think of it like all the limiting beliefs, like uh, it's not safe to be alone. Um, You know, uh, I need to be with someone in order to be safe. I, uh, I gotta keep quiet. I gotta, you know, give into their needs. I, it's not, I'm not allowed to be me. I'm, you know, whatever, like all these thoughts are all seemingly connected. They're all branches, right? Just think of them as all branches and leaves and let's get to the core. So there's something at the core that's allowing all those other ones to grow. And so what we do with the process of MER is going down. Let's find that core problem, get to it. And we release that one. And it's not a core memory. (laughs) You know, like I said, it's, it's not like, oh yeah, I remember I was 28. It's like, no, 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 this is this is when you were young. Like the core of it was created very, very, very beginning kind of deal when the imprinting phase was happening and you didn't have any conscious memories yet. And so you get to that and you release it. And then that's how you get such massive change. Like I had someone who recently we had uncovered 62 limiting beliefs. And then there's tools out there that can help you release limiting beliefs but they help you do it one by one by one by one <laughs> it's like cool do you want to sit down and release these 62 beliefs one by one <laughs> and she was like no i'm like okay let's do it this way we released that core problem and then you know it took four minutes and then uh, okay let's do a check tell me about this belief are you still do you feel energetically connected to that still like no what about this one? No. What about this one? I said that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. You just said it <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> what? How, why did I say that? <laughs> and it's so cool. It takes us longer to like go through all 60 limiting beliefs, making sure that they're all gone <laughs> than it did to actually release them all. So it's just- I mean, really this cool. does sound amazing. So can you walk us through, if someone were to hire you, I mean, what does it look like to walk through? What's the the time commitment? Um, yeah, great question. Um, so- the way I structure it, I have flexibility in how I structure it based on people's times. But the way I like to do it is it's a two-day process. And it's about, you know, five to eight hours total. And so the first thing we do is we connect and we get together and we find that greater problem. Let's go find that core, that root cause. And let's go find that because the time we spend on that is going to be the time that saves you everything later on, right? So you don't have to release everything individual. <laughs> it's like, let's go, let's get to the core. And so we find that greater problem that can take, you know, hour and a half, two hours. And then, you know, that's all done. That part, the icky part is done there. And then, so then we move on and we start a process of getting connected with your values, starting the alignment process. And then day two is the release work. So we, uh, we tap into the core emotions, which often allow all the other ones that are you know, to exist as well that might be tethered to. And so those are, you know, anger, and sadness and fear and guilt, you know, hurt, guilt, shame. And then there's some other ones that come up. So through a conversation, like if you were to say um, resentment, you know, well, resentment come up, come up a few times. Okay. It seems like there's a lot of charge around that. So I'm going to make sure that that's gone too. We're just, we just check in with all the emotions that come up in the, in that first initial conversation on day one. I keep track of all of that and go, okay, you mentioned this. Emotion. Let's check in with this. And so what happens is we do all those release work of the emotions. And then we get into the greater problem. We release the greater problem. And then we 
then I just check like, okay, yesterday you mentioned all of these limiting beliefs. I'm going to go ahead and just verify that they're gone and they're gone. <laughs> Once in a blue moon, they'd be like, oh, I think that's got like just a little tiniest charge to it. And uh, cool. Do you want to clean that up? Yeah, good. Let's go and release it. And, you know, it just happens so fast. It almost takes like, you know, two minutes max and it's just like, yeah, okay, it's gone. <laughs> it's all clean. Zero <laughs> percent. Um, it's really, really cool. And it's really neat. And then, so at that point, there you go. You're free. You know, you just release so much baggage and, and a lot of it's kind of just letting people just sit there for, for a chunk of minutes just to go, all right. And we put it to the test, by the way, like I've seen other modalities where they'll be like, oh, by the way, you've just released your sadness. Like they're telling you. <laughs> so it's like, yes, I just did this and you just released your sadness. And I went, what? No, no. Well, let's, how, let's, how about we hear it from the person who actually right. had it? And so there's just ways to check. And, you know, I can sit there, you know, so for example, if you share a memory with me and you're like, oh, I remember being in school and I thought I had the right answer. I thought I had the right answer, Troy. And I shot my hand up in grade one and the teacher called on me and I was so excited and I knew it. And I said the answer so confidently and the teacher said, no, that's a good guess, but that's not it. Anyone else? And, you know, and in that moment, I just shrunk and I could, oh, I felt so embarrassed and I felt fear and I felt judgment and I felt rejection and I felt all of these things and I, I just wanted to die. And it's like, cool. And so as people are telling me these stories, they have an emotional reaction. And then I go, cool. We just released all this stuff. Hey, I want you to tell me the story of when you were in grade one and you um, had to answer that question and you got it wrong. Tell me about that. And they go, oh yeah, yeah. I can see myself now. Oh yeah. 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 She was just, she was so embarrassed in the moment. That's, that's adorable. And they'll be sitting there smiling. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I can understand why I felt that way then. They're completely disconnected from it. They're neutral. They even have empathy and understanding and compassion for it and go, cool. So we just, we check everything, everything brought up. I check to make sure that it's all released. I mean, that is amazing. I uh, one other question I have for you is, so you release all this this mental and emotional baggage from the past. Now, how successful is it in propelling you in the future, like preventing you from, say you have an anger problem, does it prevent you from having further anger issues? Say you have a self-esteem problem, does it does it make you confident in your future endeavors? Yeah. You know, does it does it stop the process and create a new you? Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking that. So one of the things I love doing with someone right at the beginning when I meet with them is I go, let's do a self-assessment. And then I'll say, all right, I'm going to just ask you to pick a number between one and 10. You know, like the first number that comes to mind, 10 means it's max, it's great. One means like, uh-oh, is in trouble. And <laughs> let's find out where you are on the scale. And so I'll be like, tell me out of 10, what is your self-love? What is your self-worth? What is your self-belief? What is your self-trust? And they'll give me their numbers. And it usually, when they're coming to me, it, it varies, you know, at the core of it. There's usually someone who will have one bad number above the others, or, you know, maybe they're all bad. Um, but usually around uh, six, five, four, you know, and I've had people actually come to me with all ones. It's like all one. <laughs> yes. That's a one. That's a one. That's a one. That's a one to which they're like, God, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is going to change for you. And then we do the release. And then I ask them the exact same question, but let's do a self-assessment. Let's, uh, let's tell me out of 10, what's your self love? And they'll be like 15. <laughs> so they're like, Wow. I'm like, what's your self-worth? They're like, that's a 10. You know, what's your self-trust? That's a 10. That's a 12. Like, it's just, what's your self-belief? It's like, we're all 10s. Like, just everything is just maxed out. And it's just the baggage was holding us back. He's disconnected you from. So it's just, it. what that shows is just how powerful you are when you are just connected to your true self, right? And so just imagine, it's it's two days now. It's day two, Carla. You've just released all this baggage. You are now operating operating from a place of all tens. How is that going to affect you moving forward? <laughs> well, 
I guess my question is, right, we we tend to be in the moment a lot of times when we're going through this growth work. Yeah. And we do this, we have this amazing experience and we feel great. And then we go to that abusive relationship at home or Absolutely. that toxic work environment at the office yeah. or whatever challenging situation it is. Um, and then all of a sudden it's gone yeah. in a lot of cases. And so so, this, uh, so I guess the question that I'm, I'm asking is, um, when you when you do this work, yes, you go through a big personal change, mm -hmm. but then it takes time to maybe leave a toxic job or deal with a toxic um, relationship, like say one that doesn't necessarily isn't going to be able to change, like maybe with a well, parent you can or really a sibling. Control what you can control, right? Yeah, and so that's a great point. And so this is why I tell people this isn't the cure all after two days. This is step one, right? So there's four requirements of change. One is dealing with your baggage and you deal with that with the MER breakthrough session. Step two, we want to get you aligned. You know, so we're going to get you into your alignment. We want to get you really connected to yourself, understanding yourself. And it can happen really fast when all that baggage is gone. And and connecting you with your values and you know, creating your aim of what, you know, what you see yourself as, what you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have into the future. And, you know. That's what step two is. And then step three is taking action. So, so that's when I remember I said earlier, I'm like, the mistake we make is sometimes we'll just try to do something different. That's actually step three. <laughs> and that's just, sometimes it's the first step we try to do. It's like, oh, we're missing a couple of steps. So you start taking action and that action can include now adjusting to your surroundings. That environment's a big thing and have an influence on us, right? And so the great thing is, you know, the biggest thing to remember about any of this is, just because you go and you release all this bag, it doesn't mean your external circumstances change, but your relationship with those circumstances certainly does change because you have made that shift, right? And so one thing to keep in mind, as I shared with you, was how, notice how when I shared it, like people feel neutral, they almost like don't notice the change. And so that's a positive because that means you know it was deep. So they're not just off of a high. You know, they're not coming out and going, I feel so amazing. And like, it's not a dopamine hit, right? We've all experienced <laughs> that where we go to a freedom conference. We're like, the energy in here is so good. And I'm going to conquer the world. And then you get home back in your environment where it's just that it doesn't have that same energy. And you're like, ah, oh, geez, <laughs> I'm falling back into old patterns. <laughs> and so, yes, so this actually helps you shift away from that because it's deep at the core and you're not living off of a dopamine hit going, I got to keep doing it. I got to keep getting that high, they're getting that energy. Now nah, it's, it's right from your core. So you're showing up different. You're observing the world completely different. And you're, like I said, when you got your self-worth, your self-trust, your self-belief, your self-love, those are all operating at highs of like tens. Now it's just, you're in a space and you are carrying, you know, beliefs of like, okay, I can, you know, take charge. I can do something about this. I can actually, and what I'll, what I often do is I, I work with people, you know, when we, my coach beyond it is I work with them on, you know, obviously the alignment and getting to what they want and going, all right, we want to shift your environment. What's not aligned with you. And they're like, well, you know, this in my job or this in my marriage or, you know, this with my kids and this is with this and cool. And let's, let's determine, I'm going to teach you how to create connective communication because now you're probably going to have, you know, the ability to just go and communicate and confront things. <laughs> You're like, I know this is not authentic. You know, I know that's not congruent with me. So I want to do something about it. And that used to be me where I'd be like, I got no fear of, of conflict. I don't avoid conflict. I, cause I know conflict is like, you know, confrontations needed, <laughs> you know, you have to confront the problems to create solutions. And, and so it's like, got to confront this. And so I never had a fear of that. But I was never always good at it, <laughs> do the wrong strategies <laughs> and create problems and tension. But then I learned, you know, I'm like, well, oh, actually, okay. that leads me to another question I had is, is, um, are there any negative side effects from this? Like, say you're a people pleaser and you're, you go out there and you please people all the time and that's made you really great at your job. And then suddenly you're not a people pleaser anymore. Um, and then you know, are there negative side effects from that? Do you suddenly lose motivation to do anything? 
or, uh, you know, like say you have kids and you want them to be successful. And so you drive them to all their soccer practices and soccer games and um, club meetings and, and all that other stuff. And then you're suddenly not a people pleaser anymore. And you're like, ah, yeah, the kid's old enough to find their own job. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is, is, you know, I have no idea. I can't predict what strategy you're going to run beyond that. Like after you change, but I can tell you this, I know that your mindset and what's coming from the core is going to be different. So you still might drive all your kids to, into all the practices, but you're not doing it because it's like, I need to be a good mom. This is how I show I'm a good mom. This is how I show I care. This is how they'll understand that they love me. This will make sure that I am lovable. This will, you know, society will judge me if I, you know, don't drive them to this. And so I need to do this. I, you know, and so all that energy is gone right now. You're just like, if you're doing it, it's because you want it. You're just like, yeah, cool. Hey, let's just go do this. Let's, let's go drive it to there. And then if you might find other strategies, Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe I partner with another mom who lives nearby and we just take turns driving our kids to these things, you know, and that frees up some time and I'm willing to give myself some, some self-love that way. I don't know. It just depends how it shows up for you. But I, what I can tell you is that you're just going to show up different energetically and it's, it's not going to feel like a burden or feel like something you have to do. It's like, Oh yeah, cool. This is aligned with me. I want to do that. That's nice. And so, yeah, just being able to tune into the alignment, the downside, the downside, the downside is this. You will have a lower tolerance for what's not congruent. That's what I found. That's what I experienced, you know, observing some of my clients too. Um, yeah. So what's great is you can now trust your emotions. So as you think about it, if you have an emotional reaction right now, and this is another way to, well, first off, you want to tell you if you have baggage, just take the two finger test. I like to say is put it against your neck. <laughs> and when you feel the pulse, <laughs> you've got baggage. <laughs> so uh, we've all overreacted to something. right? And so it's like, oh yeah, I, I should have been angry in that moment. I could have been a level four. I reacted an eight or I lost my mind. I was a 10. It was stupid. And you feel embarrassed. You feel shame and you know, people are like, you're emotional, you're, you know, you're just overreacting and almost like they're telling you shouldn't be angry at all. Right. And so it's, and so it creates complications. And once you get rid of your baggage, now, if you're presented with that same situation, you'd still get angry, but now you're only reacting to the actual moment. You're not bringing in the past because overreaction is it's baggage from the past you're bringing in with you kind of like, you know, oh, and probably that. dealing better with anger. Absolutely. And you can trust it. Just because... like you were saying in your, just like you were saying in your experience at the airport. I mean, some people could have gone ballistic or, you know, gone into a panic attack, like you said, yeah. but because you were mental and emotionally whole, you were able to take a step back and just say, Hey, this is just, this is a situation and we're going to get out of it. And yeah. you're Absolutely. able to get out of it, you know, calmly and yeah. assuredly i don't want anyone to get the wrong idea we're not turning you into a robot here you're supposed to have emotions emotions are a gift like they're an amazing <laughs> thing which is we right, have, right, you know, right. sometimes they consume us or we you know put them away we bury them and we think ah i can control my emotions no it's like a, a ferocious animal you're caging that's you know you're not in control of the animal you've caged it <laughs> And if it gets out, it's not going to be happy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So can, I'm sure some can, of, go ahead. You can trust your emotions. And so uh, that's the beautiful thing. Like I'll sit there. I got uh, annoyed by something, you know, earlier this week, you know, it's going to happen. But I was like a level, say five annoyed. And like, it was, it was annoying. Whereas in the past, it would just been like, I would have been like, oh my goodness. I'm like, why? You know, a 15. Um, this just keeps happening, you know, nothing goes right. And, you know, uh, I just, I hate all of this. And, you know, you just, you get into a spin of just, you're just bringing on emotion that you don't need to bring on. Right. And, and so, yeah, I, I had a client, he, he was like, I, I get really, really annoyed at my girlfriend when she does this certain behavior. I know I'm just carrying a lot of baggage and I want to get rid of that. So we did. And we checked everything. It was all good. Everything was clean. Then he came back to me a few weeks later and he's like, I guess it didn't work. I, did, I must've did something wrong because my girlfriend did this and 
and it kind of annoyed me more <laughs> in some ways. And I went, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's because it's not attached to your baggage. It's attached to your value. And a value is you. And, you know, it was a high value. And so that's important to you. And so that's nothing you have to apologize for. That emotion is letting you know that that behavior is not aligned and congruent with you. That doesn't make her wrong, right? That She's just being her. And you observe, okay, that's not congruent with what I prefer. And then now you sit there and go, okay, this is my value. This is what it means to me. This is, you know, why it's important. And I can go now and communicate that. And we can kind of work together and create a win-win scenario where, you know, maybe there's a different kind of behavior that can be put into place that, you know, can meet both of our needs. I love it. So if somebody's ready to jump into this and make their own change, how can they get in touch with you? How can you get in touch with me? Great question. How can they, how can they hire you to, to help them get through their baggage really quickly? So uh, it was really fun. I had a, I had a client one time after she experienced everything. And, and so tools of MER tools of NLP just create such rapid shifts, right? Um, yeah. She released sadness. She thought she'd never, ever get past. And she's like, I thought I was stuck with that forever. You know, and I was okay with it. <laughs> just, I learned to live with it. And there's, I, we we do that a lot, don't we? Learn to live with it and just manage it. She's oh, like, yeah. I can't believe that it's gone. Like, you know, two minutes ago, I thought that was impossible. And now here it is. I actually feel, you know, appreciation for what I was sad about. I don't even know what she was sad about. Again, I don't need to know. <laughs> I hope to release it without her having to relive the story <laughs> or anything like that. But she was like, wow, you, you are a brain ninja. And I went, oh, that's fun. I grew up in the 80s, and so I love ninjas. And so I was like, cool, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> and then I had a couple more clients who did not, they didn't know each other or anything like that. And they started, you're like a brain ninja. You're a brain ninja. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> cool. Let's have fun with this. So I kind of adopted that as some of my branding, brain ninja. And so if you want to connect with me, go to brain ninja dot club club of us okay you know, brain healers of a i love it club. and yeah it'll be a way to so to brain ninja dot club c-l-u-b c-l-u-b yeah join the brain ninja club. i love it i love it yeah. now i always like to end uh, my episodes with a call to action so i'm wondering if you have a call to action that you'd like to challenge people with today absolutely today Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes. So in a big way, I'm an authenticity coach, if you will, you know, how people connect with their confidence and their true self and, and just allowing them to tune into that. Cause when you can be yourself then you know, that's actual, the real joy, that's when, you know, freedom and joy and fulfillment actually comes in. And so too often we cut ourselves out, even when we're given opportunities to actually, you know, people will sit there and go, Hey, you have a choice and we'll deny, we'll just like turn it down. So my challenge for you, my invitation for you this week is to whenever someone, especially today, if if not beyond today, especially for today, if someone approaches you and says, Hey, what do you want to do this or that? Um, Do you want to go here, go there? Do you want to eat this, eat that? Do you want to watch this, watch that? Like, what do you want to do? Often we find ourselves in a spot where we just go, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, whatever both of those sound good to me or all of those options sound good to me. And so we just kind of defer from making a decision. I'm talking to a lot of my Libra friends out there. And um, what happens when you do that, it seem, may seem trivial, but you know, even just on a small scale like that, when we don't allow ourselves to connect with what we actually want, like go within and go, you know what, in this moment, I like both, but I want this one just a little bit more. I think I'm in the mood for this. Let's go that path. It's just a chance for you to, you know, first off, accept a wonderful invitation from a person who just said, hey, I want you to choose. That's a, that's a nice gesture. That's a gesture of love. So, you know, don't deny them that. <laughs> and so you uh, you serve them that way. You know, you're helping them that way. And, and then you make a choice for yourself and you connect with yourself. And when you start to do that more, especially on the small things, it starts to help you. You can build it up into a really good skill even into the bigger things and the scarier things when it comes time to having to speak up and state a preference. That makes sense. Yeah. I love it. Be your authentic self. I think is what you're trying to say, right? Connect to your, connect to what you really want. 
you know, and, and just choose and, and make that choice. Don't surrender that, that gift that's just been given to you. Don't surrender that opportunity to tune in and connect with yourself. We live in a world that, you know, allows us to disconnect from ourselves in so many ways. You know, we're conditioned to do it. We're groomed to do it in so many ways, right? Put others needs ahead of your own and so on and so forth. And so we just have it, you know, everywhere in our life. And so this is just an opportunity to really just tune in and go, no, this is what I want. Cool. And, you know, a chance for you to own it. And it might feel weird at the beginning. More you do it, easier it gets. You see that no one dies. <laughs> you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> Your brain can learn to adjust to that. Yeah. So that's a, a simple, simple way to kind of start connecting with your authentic self. And be true to you. I love it. I love it. And I really want to thank you for coming on and <clears throat> telling everybody about this, about this amazing emotional intelligence tool and trauma recovery tool and <clears throat> mental health tool yeah um i really appreciate having you on the show yeah it's a it's a game changer thank you for you know letting me be a part of it and um i always say this isn't you know to go from you know zero to perfect this is a uh, on your path of personal growth it's like do you want to do you want to kind of like hit the fast forward button <laughs> do you want to <laughs> take five leaps instead of having to drag it all through you know and people who want that, some people don't. They, 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 they're like, oh, that seems like too much change too soon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's some baggage there around that you can let go. <laughs> well, I think there are also a lot of people that are really attached to complaining and really oh, attached to their trauma. And I think trauma. that the society okay. these days groom people for that. So I really applaud the people who are courageous enough to step out of that that really limiting bubble yes. and change yes. their own lives and you know yeah. help create a more positive world, which is the type of world I want to live in. It reminds me of, you know, my own path of when I started therapy, it felt really good, right, to express myself. And that's such a powerful thing to feel seen and heard is so powerful. And it can also become addictive especially if you haven't had it. Right. And so we're in a, we're in the golden age of victimhood right now, I feel. And by that, I mean, we're, we've created a space where that's safer to share. And that's so amazing. And that's so important. And the downside of it is that just think about it. If, if you start telling your story and all of a sudden now people give you empathy and sympathy and, you know, um, so now you have deeper connections with people. Now you have, you feel seen, you feel heard. These are meeting a lot of your needs, right? Like a lot of your values. And so you're like, oh my goodness, I, this feels good in, in a big way. You know, certainly better than just staying completely hidden and alone and feeling it's like such a dark place. But the problem is that it just keeps you trapped in your stories. And so the goal of anyone who's been victimized is not to stay in victimhood, you know? We want to provide spaces and uh, where people can share their stories. And then the goal is to get past it, right? I want to move past it. And so that's my invitation for everybody. And, it, and, and you know, everyone's journey is different. There's no judgment. And, you know, I remember there was a guy who decided I want to, you know, his mom was dying and on her deathbed, he promised that, hey, I'm going to get off drugs. You know, like he hated that about himself and that his mom, you know, just in that way. And that how his mom was leaving the world with him, you know, uh, being addicted to drugs. And it took him three years to finally take action. <laughs> to, not three years to get off the drug, but three years just to go, okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> and, you know, I just got a lot of, you know, compassion for that and empathy for that. We're, we're all, I like to say, we're, there's, when it comes to change, we want to change. And then the next phase is ready to change. And so sometimes there's a gap. And that gap can be small, that gap can be big, but just know that, you know, the goal is to move beyond victimhood. There is something better. You, I know a lot of values are being met with, with, by telling our stories, but the, the trouble is, and, and I fell into the trap or I was just telling my stories again and again, and it wouldn't allow me to get out of them. And so it actually made things worse. And that's when my anxiety got worse. And that's when I went on meds and, that, and so on and so forth. And, and so it was until I, you know, got past it and was willing to let it go 
and and look for something that was far healthier. Um, you know, that's when I could finally heal for real. And it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. And that's why I love doing what I do. I'm really glad you're doing what you're doing and that I got a chance to meet and talk to you about it. And now that we can share it with the world so we can continue to spread it. And I look forward to learning more about it myself. Um, I can also put the, the link to the book. And of course, I'll put the link to your website down in the show notes so that people can start learning more about it. Yeah. Yeah. My goal, um, when I tell people about this, my goal is to get them to read the book. I just go read the book, you know, and then you find out if it's aligned with you, you know, um, there's no one way to the top of the mountain, right? Like, uh, I'm not, I want to be sitting here going, Hey, this is the way you're like, no, this is a powerful way. And for people who this is congruent for, this is an amazing way if it's, it's worked on everybody who has ever done it. Right. So it's like, so that's good. That's positive. And it's fast. It's gentle. It's permanent. Um, and it's a chance for you to heal for real and start moving forward and creating a life by design rather than by default. Cause right now, all of our baggage keeps us trapped in a in a trance mode and a default mode and keeps us stuck in our patterns. And so this is a way to really set yourself free of that. And then you get to find out what's aligned with you and really design your life. And it's just so powerful. And so read the book. I've had, I had one person go, are you just trying to, you know, sell me something and make me a client? And I'm like, listen, how about this? I want you to heal. And, you know, if that's what you, you want for yourself, then I want it. And I'll give you this deal. I'm going to give you this deal. If this is right for you, I'm going to go ahead and, and refer you to another master practitioner of MER and NLP that I trust wholeheartedly. So I will make nothing off of this. I want you to heal. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so like read this book and I'll direct you wherever you need to go. If it's for, it just doesn't, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to scrounge and get clients here. I'm just like, when people choose me, if it feels aligned, that's amazing. And I'm, it's such an honor, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be me. You know, if you sit there and go, I like this, but I don't know if I like your vibe 100%, Troy. Cool. I appreciate that honesty. I'm not offended whatsoever. And let me connect you with someone who might feel so congruent and let's get you past your past. Let's have you heal for real. Let's do that. <laughs> and the book you're referring to is uh, Dr. Matt James's book. And it's only $3 on Kindle. At least it only cost me $3 on Kindles. Maybe I got some sort of a discount or something from. I bought it from Dr. Matt himself. He charged yeah. 10 bucks. <laughs> $10. That's great for an actual book too. Oh, it's a great deal too. Yeah. And it's, so... an easy read. it's an easy read. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody. And have a great day. Thank you, Carla. Bye.